Hey everybody, welcome to Tattoo Now TV. I'm Ben Licata, your host. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a wonderful show for you today. Uh, we've got, uh, we'll be talking with Michelle Wartman about her new website. We'll be talking with Big Gus about all the things he's been doing these days. Uh, we'll be talking with Bez from Triple Six Studios. And uh, we'll also be talking with Richie Bulldog about the Paradise article, I mean, excuse me, Paradise Artist, Paradise Chronicles. My mistake. Um, this show is brought to you by Off The Map Tattoo, um, Paradise Artist Retreat, and TattooNow.com. If you want any information about any of that stuff, it's all available on TattooNow.com with links out. Uh, this year at the Paradise Artist Retreat, we've got Guy Aitchison, Alex and Allison Gray, uh, Chet Sauer will be there, Sean Barber, Nick Baxter, uh, Jeff Gogway, uh, Hannah Aitchison will be there, and uh, Big Gus is also a featured artist this year. We're coming to you live from our new studio in beautiful downtown East Hampton, Massachusetts. Uh, I hope you like the layout. I enjoy it. Um, hopefully we'll be able to squeeze some guests in here. Um, <laughs> after this episode, we're going to be taking a little break for a few weeks. We're going to try to raise some funds and get some new equipment in here. Uh, you'll be able to uh, contribute to our Kickstarter if you're interested. You can be a part of our show. If you go to TattooNowTV.com, there'll be information there in the next coming week or so. Uh, after a few weeks of uh, some fundraising, hopefully we'll be back with some more great guests and uh, some wonderful shows. So when we come back, we're going to be talking with Michelle Wartman about her new website and all the other guests I mentioned earlier. Stick with us. Uh, you can ask your questions on the chat and I'll try to get to you uh, for any of our guests. And uh, we'll see you on the other side of this short message. So different to any other convention. It's really, really cool. <laughs> All the shows I've been to, this one is definitely different. And uh, to see uh, the collective artists, you know, at the top of the industry, you know, all in the same building has been a really great experience for me and I'm sure for everybody that has attended this year. because it's purely about the art. So people come here and, they, and everyone wants to share. It's so open, like everyone wants to share and see everyone else progress. It's a, its main focus is the art and the artists and the education. This type of stuff is what, you know, makes me feel like I'm on the right path and like helps me stay focused and inspired. This is something different. Um, every year it's been the same. It's, it feels better every time it seems. You know, amazing artists, amazing just atmosphere. Almost a bit of a pain to have to work. The Paradise Tattoo Gathering is, is significantly different from many other conventions, uh, solely, solely because it deals with the uh, quality over quantity aspect. Many conventions are just a bunch of tattooers in a large room doing tattoos. Michelle, um, just hang with us. So this offers a lot more learning potential and other artists can show up if they're not working the show and take lots of seminars and it's like a little mini learning vacation for them. I've done so many seminars this weekend it's hard to put a finger on. Um, I've been inspired in so many ways, uh, spiritually, um, artistically, even like the approach that you have to your clients, to your work. Um, things like that. I think it's been um, it's been inspiring in a, in a whole, not in one way. Um, my, I couldn't even sleep last night. My brain was racing so much. It's great to see the people that are at the top of the tattoo mountain willing to share that information, as opposed to you know treating every aspect in life as a game to climb over everyone else and just stay up lonely at the top. Um, there's no sense of that here at the show. It's helping to, you know, increase the visibility of, you know, tattooing, you know, around the world and, you know, just helping, you know, everybody at least to, you know, participate, you know, to get better. I would say that um, always, always got home inspired after this kind of, after this particular convention. I think this convention definitely has an effect on the industry and I think it already has changed the industry just in the few years that it's been happening.
And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that video about the Paradise Tattoo Gathering. And I hope you guys can join us at the next one. It's going to be in Keystone, Colorado. You can get tickets at uh, ParadiseTattooGathering.com. We're going to be talking with Michelle Wartman. Uh, if we can get her on the line here. Michelle, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can, can you hear, hear me okay? Loud and clear. Cool. So, welcome to the show. Uh, we've had you here before. Welcome back. Thanks for having you me. You recently uh, have a new website up, done by the folks at Tattoo Now. Yeah. Um, yeah, as uh, Michelle Wartman dot com. Gabe and his crew put it together, and it uh, just went live. Uh, I guess about a week ago. It looks uh, it looks really great. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank you. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I love it. I um, I've never had a, my own personal website before, and I feel like it's very me. And I love the fact that it shows all the different art that I do and brings it all together. Uh, so we've got some shots of some of your tattoos. Has there been any that you've done recently that you've really enjoyed? Uh, pretty much everything I've done lately I've been enjoying because they're ongoing uh, projects. A lot of people come to me and they start with just shoulder caps like this example right here, Jen, and we just build it and grow it uh, as their sessions progress. She's actually my next appointment. Uh, she's coming out and we're bringing it into three-quarter sleeves, even lower. I mean, from the outside view, it looks three-quarter, but on the inside, back panels and that kind of thing. So I love I love this piece and I love uh, the continuation of the process of the work I do. Uh, if if someone was looking to get tattooed by you, are you accepting a new clientele at all? And if you are, what would the process be? Yeah, uh, I'm accepting uh, new new appointments. I'm interested in doing some new work and just seeing where I can take the style of tattooing that I'm doing. They can go to michellewartman.com and hit the appointments button and there's a lot of information there on uh, getting an appointment with me. Uh, mainly I'm working on women and I'm interested in doing tattoos where there's uh, not existing work there already so I can create a cohesive overall look. So can you explain a little bit to the folks who, don't, who might not know uh, why you like to focus on tattooing women uh, specifically? Sure. Oh, well, originally when I started tattooing, uh, I was about 50-50, 50% male clientele, 50% female clientele, and I enjoyed all the projects. But then uh, as I started getting deeper into the tattoo style that I was developing, I really found that it was just really preferable for me to work on women because I felt like the style really resonated with uh, their energy and their physique and my, my, me and how I feel. And it was just this connection that I had with the work and with the people I was working on. So it felt just very natural for me to go in this direction. Uh, that answers absolutely. the question. It absolutely answers the question. Uh, well, so have you been really busy lately? I know that you, you know, you're a mom and an artist as well. Uh, have you, are you finding yeah. enough time to do... Uh, to get all your work done and, and still paint for yourself? and Well, there's really never enough time, but I'm managing. Uh, it's been a little bit slow over winter just because uh, it's sort of the off-season for tattooists, so I've been trying to focus on other things and work on painting and uh, getting the website together and uh, promotion, things like that, but I'm starting to get a lot busier now that it's springtime or spring is around the corner. It is. I'm really looking forward to spring myself. It's been a long, cold Long cold yeah. winter here in New England. I feel the same way. I feel like I've been hibernating and ready to be in some warm weather and you know see flowers again. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. My my personal solar battery has been run down a little bit. Um, so what have you got coming up uh, in the coming weeks, months? What's new, what's new in your world? Sure. Well, one of the things that I'm very excited about, as I'm sure you are too, is the upcoming uh, Paradise Artist Retreat, which is happening in New Mexico in, what, about 10 days or so, maybe a little bit lo longer than that, but not far from now. So I'm gearing up for that, trying to figure out what supplies I'm going to need to bring, and just looking forward to having a retreat and doing some art. I'm really looking forward to the Artist Retreat. Uh, it's it's going to be a, a nice break, a nice uh, some time to get away and just focus on art and, you know, it's... I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a great experience. And good people and just us all inspiring each other to uh, work on ourselves as artists and bring that back into our tattooing. And for the folks that are watching us, it's, uh, it's not too late. If you were interested in going, you can still uh, you can get tickets and there's still room for you. Uh, so if you want to go, check it out, um, paradiseartistretreat.com. 
Uh, we think it's the kind of event that's going to be, if you don't go, you're going to say, why didn't I go to that event? Because it's going to be so epic and amazing and inspirational. So, so, so some folks who don't know, uh, you've been to an artist retreat before, yes? No? Yeah, uh, we went to the last one that uh, Gabe and his crew hosted, and I guess we were we were co-hosts with that. So that was amazing. It was one of the best times I ever had at a non-tattoo convention that felt like a convention without the tattooing. All the people were there that we wanted, you know, that we enjoyed hanging out with, and we all inspired each other to uh, to do artwork. This is the uh, the piece you just showed was my painting that I did uh, while I was at the Paradise Artist Retreat. I actually finished it over the course of uh, the year that I was pregnant, which was the same year we did that that event. Um, and I think the figure drawing too. I don't know if you, I, if you wanted to put that sample up, but uh, that I sent. But um, the figure drawing is—it's almost like a little mini art school. You know, the Paradise Artist Retreat between the classes and the drawing and the focus on uh, being an artist. It's just really um, therapeutic to, uh, to kind of get your juices going and, and get in touch with yourself as an artist. Uh, that's yeah. It's 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 wonderful. Um... So what types of things can people expect who, who maybe haven't been before, um, you know, day-to-day -day types of things? Well, uh, almost every morning we're going to have figure drawing, which is a, a really nice way to kind of loosen your uh, your drawing skills up and your mind up and just be very fluid. It, it creates a sense of uh, fluid rhythm as an artist just to look at something three-dimensional and try to try to draw it in a short span of time. And then there's going to be instructional classes also. Uh, Nick Baxter is teaching a class on his uh, amazing painting techniques of glazing and layering. Um, Jeff Gogwe is teaching a class on uh, how to make a career out of being a, an artist beyond tattooing, uh, selling your paintings and getting established with that. Uh, Guy is teaching a class on how to pull uh, the visionary energy into your tattooing. The Greys are teaching a class on uh, being visionary artists and uh, channeling that energy. So those are just some of the classes. I'm sure there's more, but um, I feel like that's just really that's just really an amazing uh, spectrum of things that you can absorb. Well, that was a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful summary. That was great. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. I know there's more, but that you know, those are some of the things that I think would be inspirational to anyone coming to this event. Oh, definitely. That, that, I, I couldn't have put it into words better. That was that was great. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> uh, before we uh, switch out to someone else, is there anything else you'd like to add in your segment of the show? Well, I just want to thank everyone at uh, Tattoo Now for building such a beautiful website, and I'm really proud of it. I hope you guys will, anyone watching, will come check it out. Uh, I love being an artist, and I love sharing what I do. Well, thank you for being with us, and uh, everyone out there, you can check out Michelle's website at michellewartman.com. It's a beautiful website. It, I think it really reflects her personality and the style of her tattooing and her artwork. Thank you, Michelle, for being with us. Thank you, Ben. You Have too. a great day. Okay, bye-bye. So for folks who might have caught the show, um, we, our last show a few weeks ago, we did a Skype extravaganza, which Michelle was also a part of. Uh, you can see a little highlight video here. Uh, we had Guy Aitchison, we had Steve Peace, uh, Chet Czar, James Kern, Tons of folks. It was two hours long of Skyping and chatting and talking art and conventions and tattooing. It was wonderful. If you got to, got to catch that, I'm glad you saw it live. Um, for the folks who didn't see it live, you can see it at uh, TattooNowTV.com. We have archives of most of what we've done in the past. It was just a great show. I mean, the archive is unedited, so you get the live experience, but uh, you don't get to ask the questions, you know. Um, last week we did a webinar with Stefano Alcantara from Peru. He did a tattoo from sketch to stencil to a fully rendered three-dimensional realistic tattoo. He answered questions via the chat about his technique, uh, specifically what he was doing as he was tattooing. Um, he kind of walked us through the entire tattoo. It was really a, an experience that was not to be missed. And we have more webinars available, uh, part of our professional development series. If you go to TattooNow.com, you can check out our upcoming webinars. We've got one, as you can see here, we've got Caesar is going to be doing a two-part tattooing process webinar. Uh, in the first part, he's going to be talking about setup, um, process, and the second part, he'll actually be doing the tattoo. And then we have one in July, uh, Black and Gray Tattooing with Big Gus. Uh, Hopefully we'll be talking to Big Gus later. He'll tell us a little bit about that. So thanks for sticking with us. We'll be right back after a short message.
I hope you hang around. Okay, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that um, Off the Map Northwest video. We've got some uh, new artists out at that shop. If you check out offthemap.com, you can see who's been coming in and out. Uh, that shop's really been taking off in the last year. Uh, we love that place. So we're going to be talking to, with Bez from Triple Six Studio uh, in the UK. Bez started off uh, in a, a world that wasn't tattooing. He was uh, doing video game design and things like that. He's going to tell, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, and he'll tell us a little bit about his uh, new machine and some of the vibrant tattooing that he's been doing. Bez, can you hear me? Mm, not yet. Bear with us while we get Bez on the line. He's got a new DVD out I, um, that we'll be talking about, Design Through Chaos. Um, Talk a little bit about what conventions he's got coming up and things like that. Hey, Bez. Well, I can hear I can you. Hear you, can you hear me? Fine. I'm glad you're there. Oh, uh, it's all right. You'll you. be able to see me shortly. <laughs> so, Bez, welcome to the show. We're going to work out some of this stuff on our end. Uh, as long as you can hear me, it'll be fine. Excellent. Thanks for having us. So you are located in the UK? Yes, I'm located in Sunderland, which is the oh, northeast of England. Sunderland here too. Uh, about to <laughs> than I was. Um, so tell us a little bit about your shop. It's Triple Six Studios. 
Yeah, that's triple six with four artists there. We've been there for about five years. Um, we just you know, we do have lots of guests come. We try to do as much good work as we can. Um, we try to push a few boundaries. So, uh, why triple six? Uh, it's because my previous job, I was in computer games. One of my old bosses called us the devil, and it sort of stuck. <laughs> so. Triple six sort of falling through. Could you do me a favor and just check your video? I'll uh, click your camera video and see if it's on I'm, your computer. Yeah, I'm actually pressing it and nothing's happening. Oh, I think I know what's the problem. There we go. It's all right. So, the people that are watching this live, they can bear with us. And then uh, the folks who aren't will get to see a nice clean edit. Maybe we can work with Richie Bulldog to get this thing tuned up beautifully. Nobody wants to see oh, my come face. On. I'm a little <laughs> bummed out that you. I'm a, video I'm a little depressed video now, that you got rid of the big beard, though. Uh, yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, so am I. But it's only hair. It'll grow back. So, you mentioned a little bit about video games. Uh, what were you doing in the video game uh, industry before you got into this tattooing stuff? I was a 3D artist um, and game designer and art director. Um, I was doing that from like about the age of 13. 13? That's... So, Wow. I was 13, yes. Instead of a paper round, I was doing computer games. So, so my background is like 3D art and animation and So uh, stuff. why did you make the transition? Um, it, was, it was an accident. Um, basically, the computer in games industry now is it's gone from a little industry where you had like small teams to massive teams of 100 people. And there's just not the hands-on um you, you can't you, it's it's a big production line now with production costs which go into like hundreds of millions so it just got too big for for me so, uh, so then how, fell in how did tattoo you make the step um how did you first begin to tattoo it was a total accident just you, through a friend just tattooing um, in someone's kitchen or something no i had my me, me, me own studio which i actually started doing more freelance work for computer games I actually set the whole studio up there and I was tattooing for half a day a week and then it went on to eventually being a full-time job and I did phased out the computer games and the 3D so, stuff. Uh, have, have you noticed a difference in, uh, in, the, in the communities, you know, video game versus tattooing? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's a massive difference. <laughs> um, both are, are big, massive communities and when I first came into tattooing, I, I thought it was very similar to how the computer games would be. I remember going to my first show, I was telling Gabe, we went to the first after party show, and we were, we were sitting at the bar, um, and the colleague I was with, the fellow artist, I was like, so when are we going to the after show? And he went, this is the after show. <laughs> uh, because in computer games, we used to go to E3, and they used to have like, the Chili Peppers and Foo Fighters open up, open up the show. <laughs> A little bit of a shock. Yeah, <laughs> my band played at one of the uh, one of the parties at one of these conventions. Yeah, we're not quite the Chili Peppers. Yeah, we're yeah, a little, little smaller vibe, but yes, yeah, just crazy. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Are you enjoying the people that you've been meeting uh, through the tattooing? Yeah, yeah, I've met some amazing people. Um, I mean, with every industry, there's a lot of people who I don't, I you know, I don't think are amazing. Of course, uh, but I think that's a lot to do with. Tattooing is such a, a big industry, but at the same time, it's such a small. Um, it has such a almost cottage industry feel, and whereas the previous industry, industry everybody was very helpful in tattooing. Everybody's very competitive, and that's what's good about you know tattoo now and and stuff like this. It's actually showing people stuff and it's trying to educate people stuff. It's not keeping secrets from people. So. Yeah, but yeah, it, 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 we're all about education here, you know. We're trying to get, yeah. trying to get everybody a better tattoo, really. Uh, and it's helping. I mean, I've noticed the difference. I've been tattooing for five years now, and there's a massive, massive difference in what tattooing was five years ago to what it is now. Um, and and that's one one of the reasons I did the design through chaos, is because I think tattooing is sort of. Techniques are plateauing, but they, they, everybody's getting to be quite good now. And now this design, I think, is going to make a big difference. So you mentioned Tattoo Through Chaos. That's your DVD. Yeah. Um, where can people get a, get a hold of that? Um, 
Guy's site, stop it. Um, Tattooeducation.com? Yeah, and get it from chopstickstudios.com. Um, I think Gabe stocks it as well. So, uh, What kind of information I'm, is available on the DVD? Yeah. Well, what can people expect out of the DVD? Uh, the DVD, what, what basically I try to show is I try to show people how to use tools that we always use. We all use Photoshop. Um, but ninety percent of tattoo studios, uh, and I'm trying to show people that with using some simple tools, you can use the, some like advanced techniques, but to create some unique ideas very, very, very quickly and very simply without having to have too much knowledge, and to try and think outside the box. Um, as, I, as I mentioned in the videos, a lot of people what we do the first thing people do is go on a website or the open up magazine, and that's where the customer ends up coming to you or the art and going, oh, I want something like this. Whereas the, the DVD sort of show, gives a, the artist a method of creating something that, you know, is is new and is different. Um, and that way, hopefully, will push tattooing in a slightly different direction. So the DVD is definitely about uh, modern innovation in tattooing. Uh, and you've been kind of an innovator yourself. You designed your own uh, tattoo machine. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the little ego? Um, yeah, we've got the little ego, which was, you know, I actually went and taught myself AutoCAD and engineering, which was. Um, that, that sounds that sounds challenging, but if I guess if you're starting off as a as a 3D animator at 13, uh, you've got the skills. Yeah, I, well, I thought I had it took longer than I thought, but um, the first couple looked amazing. I had some amazing looking machines. Unfortunately, none of them actually functioned. <laughs> Perhaps it would be possible to make. Um, but yeah, eventually we got the little ego, which was designed to be... One of the problems I have at the minute is coils and rotaries, uh, they tattoo differently. And I want something that tattooed like a coil, but had the weight of a rotary. Um, and I also wanted something that was a lower price mark than some of the tattoo machines that were currently coming out in the market. Um, and it's also an introduction to the ego line, because we have some of the machines planned and other products. Was it was it difficult to come up with, uh, with, you know, with a rotary machine that would mimic, you know, the, the spring of a coil machine? Was it was it hard to to get that? Yeah. To get like you know the back pressure and like I, it, I don't know the technical aspects of it all, but was it hard to get, to get it to mimic a rotary machine? I mean, a coil machine. Um. Yeah, it was. Um. But I sort of that's my my forty. I invent things. Um. My my brain doesn't stop. Um. And I had the idea, like pretty much straight away, just to simulate the front and back spring, because uh, a lot of coil, a lot of rotary machines don't actually have a softness or a give. It's a fake give. This has proper give, which is what you get from a coil, um, a coil machine with the springs. Um, so the idea was built around that idea uh, of simulating the front and the back springs. Uh, are these available to the, to uh, the general public? Can people get these uh, machines in their hands? Yeah, I think. Um, Tattoo Machines Now or dot now or whatever it is, Gibbs, Gabe will put a link up, no doubt. Uh, yeah, tattoo machines now dot com. Yeah, they do that's the American side. So everybody in the US can get them from there. and um, the UK, um, they can get them from Truck Six Studios or from Killer Inc. And basically nearly every distributor now has got them. Um, so So you personally, uh tattooing wise, have you got any travel plans coming up in the next uh, coming months or so? Um I'm doing I'm obviously coming over to to gathering. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, so I, I missed last year, but I'll be back this year. Um, so I'll be over there. Um, various bits around Europe. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it for the for this year. I'm trying to, trying to keep quiet. <laughs> machine to design, you see. Do you, uh, do you, uh, is there a difference in tattooing in Europe versus uh, tattooing in the States? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think, um, it's it's pretty much the same. I mean, everywhere, every every little place has got a pocket of inspiration and, and have just you know, a lot of American artists are inspired by a lot of Europe artists, and it's it's likewise. Um, there's we've got a very talented planet, basically. Uh, hey, with the, with the internet, everything's becoming one homogenous group. It is, yes. I mean, um, I mean, there's some of the stuff coming out of Russia and. In Poland at the minute is just mind blowing, uh, and and it's um, 
it's with the internet and travel now, it's tattooing isn't as close as it used to be. Uh, I think you used to have just your magazines, which you, you bought in your country, and you, you. But now with the internet, as you see, you, you see everything. Yeah, the, the access um, to the great, some of the really great art out there is amazing. Yeah. You know, when I was first getting into tattoos as a fan 20 plus years ago, it was whatever magazines I could find at the local magazine shop or, you know, they were stuck in behind the porno magazines. And now, it's still, nowadays, it's amazing the access you have to some of the yeah. artists. Now, that's why I think magazines now are suffering because the internet is so, I mean, resources like Tattoo Now and there's so many different resources out there to see amazing tattoos. Facebook. Yeah, in, uh, Instagram has been great, you know. I'd, you, you Instagram's can, fantastic. You brand new um, tattoos every day. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite Instagram. Like so. Yeah, I, I gave up the Facebook and went straight to the Instagram because. Yeah, well, I've actually just deleted my Facebook. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did as well. It was. It, yeah. Don't need it. Instagram's there. That'll do. Saves all the hassle and all the aggro that comes with everything else. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, thanks for talking with us. Um, it's a pleasure. We're going to show a little video to the folks about your machine, and. Um, so the best way to get in touch with you is through your website, triple six studios.com. Through triple six studios.com and send an email and we'll get back. Yeah. And great. It's been an absolute pleasure being on here. Thank you very much. And it's been great talking with you and uh, hopefully we'll get you back uh, sometime soon and we'll actually yeah, get a, a picture of your beautiful face on the screen for everyone to see. I've actually got video here, but you haven't got it. No, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just see an icon. All right, great. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, right. we'll talk to you soon, Bez. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. I'm Benz from Triple Six Studios. Let me show you my ego. As I've been tattooing, I've started developing wrist problems and I've noticed a lot of artists have developed a similar problem. With the Ego, the idea was to design a light, affordable machine. So here it is, the Ego. The Ego uses our patented power triangle system. It simulates front and back spring. You have six different grades of rubber, from hard to soft, hard to soft, simulating front and back spring. RCA jack, nice and convenient, nice stable connection. Vice. A little bit of pressure, nice super secure lock. This is the Ego Bio Grip, this is our new grip. It's super comfortable, it's made of super soft silicon. It has a part at the back to help relieve wrist strain and a part at the front to help relieve vibration on the front finger. Tattooists love the feel of a coil machine. There's a lot of rotaries don't behave like a coil. With the Ego, we've simulated the front and the back spring of a coil machine, so you get the best of both worlds. Some of the advantages of using the Ego is you've got extremely extremely lightweight machine which is very movable in your hand you, you, you're not restricted it's more like a pen it's like uh, tattooing with a marker and that is the, the whole idea of the shape of the ego and get the center of balance over the top of the tube and away from the back of your hand so that enables you to have a bit more freedom and a bit more of a marker like experience when you're tattooing with that it gives you the ability to tattoo for longer and have a little bit more control over your tattooing process because your wrists aren't getting tired and the weight of the machine is, is nicely balanced. So I've given the Egos a go and the speed is just amazing. Uh, you know, it's just like using the coil. It really is, you know, for the speed and the quality work I can put out. Um, I'm, I'm very, very happy with them. I have many Egos from Bears. Um, probably about six now and I'm very happy with them all. So much time and effort went into making the Ego I'm happy where it's at, and so are a lot of other artists. It's definitely taken off. Howdy, welcome back to the show. So that was a video uh, about Bez's new machine that he spoke a little bit about in the previous segment, the Little Ego. 
Uh, that video was shot by our next guest, Richie Bulldog, who we're going to try to bring up on Skype. And uh, we'll talk with him about some of his recent video projects. And he's also been working on the uh, Paradise Tattoo Gathering Chronicles. Hey, Richie, can you hear me? I can. Hey, how's it going, man? Going great. Welcome back to the show. Nice to see you. It's good to be seen. So we, we just watched a little uh, video that you made for, for Bez and his new little ego. Uh, you recently went out and saw Bez in the UK? I did. I did. Uh, it was a good time. It was a very good time. Very uh, rainy. Well, as to be expected, I suppose, uh, that time of year out there. Yeah, he was, uh, he was a natural star. He blossomed under the camera and uh, the lights. Uh, I'm, naturally. I'm sure it was great direction as well. Yeah, it was all in the direction. <laughs> so uh, other than the, the project with Bez, what have you been working on recently? A um, couple of things. I did... Uh, I did a uh, video for Jose Perez Jr. Uh, Dark Water. That is correct. In uh, Chicago, my boy Jose is uh, next level black and gray, so textured, so deep, so layered. Uh, if you don't know, you should know. Perez Jr. Dark Water Tattoo. Uh, I'm definitely a, f good I'm guy. a fan of his work. He's, uh, he's, been, he's been making some beautiful tattoos recently. Yeah, making some big moves too. I hear uh, he's one of the new resident uh, Dream Team artists they have working at uh, Last Rites. I don't know if he's doing a monthly spot there or whatever it is, but they just brought in a plethora of new, fresh, young talent. And uh, he indeed is one of these guys, man. If you don't know, again, you got to check him out. George Perez Jr., so uh, yeah, it's Jose's over at at, at uh, Last Rites. You've been uh, you've been doing some uh, working on the Paradise Tattoo Gathering Chronicles videos as well. I have, um, I have a bunch of stuff. I was supposed to have a video here this week. We had a little uh, we had a little crash. Thank God we had Jose's video still at hand and some other stuff still in a separate separate can, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, yeah, we, uh, so what, we still got a lot of stuff coming and, uh, Stefano's coming real soon. Tom Strom is coming real soon. Uh, John Anderton's coming real soon. There's a bunch of stuff, bunch of stuff. That's excellent. And uh, you're going to be going to the, uh, are you going to the artist retreat? I am so stoked. Very stoked. I'm going to the artist retreat. We're going to be doing some filming there. Uh, Gabe and I are starting to talk about a secret project coming up also really big and really soon. Um, we might be filming for that at the retreat. We're going to be do some more chronicles at the retreat if we have time. Uh, a lot of great stuff um, in the works doing something with the great Ian McCown for uh, the new book that's coming out. His uh, Light and Shadows book? Correct. That monochromatic genius that he does that stuff that he does so well i know he's been working and, really um, hard on that book yeah man i think they did really well on the pre-sales he did a facebook pre-sales and i heard he did over like 50 books which is amazing that is great amazing he yeah no that's awesome he's really been using social media a lot to uh get himself out there and kind of let people know about him that's for sure i see him all over the internet yeah man facebook has been uh i mean Facebook, Instagram, social media in, in general has brought so many people um, who would normally be like an introvert. Uh, you know, artists for the most part are kind of, uh, I mean, I don't want to say for the most part, but many artists that I know, they're more introverted. And the reason why their art is so successful is because they can spend so much time by themselves and working alone and doing these things. So before all this social media stuff, it was all word of mouth. Hey, did you see this guy's stuff? Did you see this girl's stuff, man? It's really awesome. But now with Facebook, all you got to do is get out there and have a little circulation and, and post. And pretty much the more time you put into the Facebook or the Instagram, I mean, and, and sites like Tattoo Now and Gabe's Genius that he does through all his web marketing mastery that he does. I mean, all that stuff, it's so, so, it's not like the old days where you'd put an ad in the yellow pages. <laughs> And just hope. And then wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's so many, so many awesome tools now. You know, and then artists can step up their game with, like, 
the worldwide tattoo conference and all these things naturally that have been uh, just pretty much set up by social media. Social media has been making this all possible. So, I mean, it's a no brainer. Get in it to win it. So for folks who, who might have not caught some of our earlier segments and stuff, how did you, how did you get into the whole tattoo community and video? Um, well, I've, uh, I started out, I guess, as a, as a shop rat, if you will. Um, that's a, a guy who comes around and hangs out at the shop and gets tattooed. And either you develop into a, an apprentice if you decide to pursue the artistic way or you come in and work the office way and the marketing and the management of the shop. And that's where I went. I got tattooed by a lot of the guys who, uh, who've been tattooing 20, 30 years now. And I've just been in the community on, on the business end. You know what I mean? I have a lot of friends that are artists, um, for 20 plus years. And, uh, I took my, my know-how in filmmaking and, uh, I have a background in media and marketing and film production. And I put it together with what I love, which is the tattoo community and the art community. And, uh, and now came this Richie Bulldog certified and I try to show the best of the best of the best and uh, keep a certain level of prestige and bring it to everybody, to the masses, the best way I can through film. And there you go. It, it seems like you're, uh, you're getting to be quite successful. It's, it's the stuff I see is really, it's been really great. Hey, uh, I just got word that Bez wants to uh, have a little chat with you. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, I don't think it's anything bad. <laughs> I think he just wants to talk with you. Uh, he's got some, free, All right, he's that's got some fine. free time, so we're going to sneak him in. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, so we're going to uh, show the video that you did for Jose Perez. And then uh, he's going to sneak in here, and you guys can chat, and I'll get in on the chat, and we can... Uh, we have a good time. Uh, we've got Tattoo of the Day coming up. If you guys want to stick around for that, too, we can kind of talk about some of the tattoos that have come through the, the Tattoo Now website. Sure, man. Awesome. Cool. All right. So we'll be right back with you after we show everybody your video. Awesome. Always a good time. I'm Jose Perez Jr. I was born in Chicago, and I own Dark Water Tattoos on the south side. <laughs> When I was 11, my parents decided it was a great idea to move to Mexico, take the whole family. They sold everything and said we were going on a vacation. And we never just never came back. <laughs> I lived in a small town and everybody was, you know, dirt poor, but very humble, you know. And it's something I wanted to do is like go to school, you know, over there and I didn't have the means to do it. I didn't have the means to go to college over there, you know, and I was like I wanted to better myself, you know, and, and, and not be in that situation anymore, you know, because it came sometimes I had a hustle, you know, whatever, door to door or some fruit we used to, me and my sister used to cut down and, and we used to hustle door to door just to make, you know, make some money to eat tonight, you know, feed the family. Yeah, that's where it all comes from, you know, it just molded who I am and, and and in Mexico is where I actually picked up my first my first needle, you know. Actually made my first needle. <laughs> How did you sterilize shit? How we did it was just with a, a lighter man. <laughs> you know, we were kids, you know, I was like, uh, I was at 16 when I first picked up uh, one of my bootleg uh, tattoo machines. <laughs> my friends, um, he got a hold of like this prison art magazine, I just remembered. <laughs> prison art magazine that had like, these killer, just raw uh, tattoos, you know, in prison. And we were kids, we were like, oh, that's badass, you know, I want to do that, let's get one. <laughs> and yeah, man, I can, I did a couple on myself. I might show you guys in the future, <laughs> but uh, black and gray realism, textures, um, I get down and dirty with blacks of blacks, lights of lights, I get all the detail, I take my time, I put my heart and soul into everything I do, I just make sure that I really get really intricate with all of the textures, details, 
you know, the things that your average artist doesn't really look into or stop to actually accentuate. I would just love for people to see my stuff to just understand what took to get there, to, what went into that piece. You know, it wasn't just a piece, let me whip it out just because I want to. No, it was because I really give a shit and I care and I want people to see that in my pieces, man. You know? I would like them to see the passion and dedication and attention to detail. You know, I think that's what sets me apart, the textures. You know, I take my time and do all the little tiny little things that a lot of people tend to bypass. To me, it's uh, that's the hard thing to do, and therefore I take on the task to do it. I was told early on that uh, I wouldn't make it so too far in the tattoo industry because I didn't really have an artistic background. I put in a lot of sacrifice, you know, a lot of just everything that I have to give, you know, it's just a lot of passion. Hey, we're back. That was uh, that was a pretty cool ass video. Hey, Richie, can you hear me? I can. Nice work can on the video, me? man. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're back with Richie, and I believe Bez is going to join us as well. Hey, look, I can see your face. <laughs> yes, I've ruined the party. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Pleasure. You, you couldn't stay away without us seeing your seeing your ugly mug, huh? Yeah, you just I just need it to make Richie look handsome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys, you feel free to chat with each other as well as me. Uh, I don't have any specific questions, but uh, I'm. Bad. Hey, my brother. Yo. So, uh, I have a question. Um, when I was lucky enough to be up at Triple Six. And I got to see that crazy, crazy piece that dude's like, I was like, would you call it like a half a body suit? On oh, the leg, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you come up with something like that? He did this piece where it was like, there was realism in it. And then there was such simplistic video game designs in it that were almost, I mean, they were. They were actually pixelated, simplistic. Yeah, that's like that. There it is. I mean, how do you come up with something like that? Uh, uh, what what would you call a style like that? I mean, that's definitely a style that you've. I mean, that's definitely your thing. I mean, just like yeah. there's a trash polka thing and there's this that thing. And what do you call that? Um, heroin. That's how I come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> only kid, okay. Only well, how kid. about for the kitties at home? <laughs> no. Um, I just try and think outside the book. Everything I do, I try to be different and. I come up with stuff like that, either with Design Through Chaos or it's the first image I get in my head, like first thing in the morning and it just sticks. Uh, and once I've got an image in my head, I can't tattoo until, you know, I can see that image, but once it's there, it just won't go away. Uh, and I'd say most of that stuff was free-handed on as well, so it's just we just create it as it goes along, let it evolve, like sculpting. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. I like the... Uh, the juxtaposition. <laughs> I love saying that word. <laughs> it goes with my mustache. I love, <laughs> I love that the simplicity. It's very uh, like Japanese billboardy. You know what yeah, I mean? Like that's what I wanted. I wanted. Um, he wanted a Japanese leg piece, and I didn't want to do what everybody else is doing and co copy like Jeff Goldway and Shige and stuff like that. So I wanted to do something that was stuff like the realism side, like the Hanyas and. We've got the crane in and the and the water lilies and the cherry blossoms and then put in some totally and utterly other end of the spectrum, some very graphic, uh, almost neon signs. There's Godzilla in there, there's uh, there's Mario, there's game stuff in there, just just to have a massive contrast uh, between the two styles and still but still being a Japanese like leg sleeve. I'm not Japanese, so I don't know the the way how things are supposed to be, so this is just my take on it. Oh, you're not Japanese. No, no, I might oh. look it. Uh, I <laughs> but um, I, I, you know, it was just my take on doing something different with Japanese. Yeah, I, no, dude, that's next level. I, I, I like to be awkward, basically. So when you have a client come in, uh, are they looking for something specific? Do they give you just a pretty much a general idea, or are they are are you just 
using your images on them. Like, do they come in and say, yeah. do whatever the hell you want, go ahead, do my whole leg? So if, if a client comes in and goes, do whatever you want, then we'll go to the cinema because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, as everybody knows, I'm quite a reluctant tattooist until I actually start tattooing. Um, when a client comes to me, they usually come with a, just a theme and I'll, ask, I'll, I'll speak to the client and I'll find out what's important to them and I like to take things that are about them and put them into the tattoo because I can do some really cool, crazy artwork. Hmm. There's a good example I'll, right there. Yeah, wow. that's an old that's been finished since then. But um, I'd like I, I like to have something of the, that the client sees in their head. I try and get out what they say in their head and put my twist on it as well. So, how does somebody explain something like this to you? Yeah, I want this thing that looks like it's twenty five dimensions deep and sixty seven thousand different colors. <laughs> he just said he wanted something colorful and abstract. Oh, uh, and that's what you came up with. When a, holy shit, that's amazing. <laughs> we're actually do, we're actually doing his back next, and his theme is he wants dark and old. So completely, so, completely the opposite. So completely the opposite, like so. Uh, it should be interesting. Do you have a favorite style? I mean, do you like the do you like that super bright, bold color all the time, or do you like to have a chance to do some of the black and just do shading work and values and things? Uh, yeah, the the my my best day is doing black and gray, but um, I, I get to do a lot of color, which is a good thing, but um. I like to mix it up. I get bored very easily, so um, that's the beauty of tattoo. And every day is different, uh, and every project's different. And my my personal style's changed a lot more. I mean, I'm known for doing a lot of realism, but I've actually got a lot more graphic. Um, and it just it just evolves. So you know, keeps myself from getting bored. <laughs> Speaking of uh, getting bored, can I ask you a question? Go for it, dude. About the. Uh... Do you feel your uh, style changed as the progressions of your machines? Uh, no, because to me, even though like, I design machines now and, and whatever, to machine, I think one of the the popular misconceptions in tattooing is that the machine's going to change you, but it, it, it doesn't. The machine just is a tool, and that's all a tattoo machine is to me, is a tool. I get, I get influenced by things outside of tattooing, and that's one of the things I'm trying to push is people to look outside of tattoo magazines and look at nature and look at, you know, art and just find some, and that's the bits that influence me and change my tattoo. So, and I'm, I'm a lot more graphic now because I'm a lot more into graphic novels and older stuff at the minute. So, so what kind of what kind of art are you are you doing when you're not a uh, when you're not tattooing or is there a lot of computer stuff or? Yeah, I do a lot of 3D. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I still do a lot of, you know, painting with oils and acrylic, but at the minute I'm I'm swimming back into 3D and you know doing stuff with design through kiosks and um, building lots of models and things. So that's where I'm at, at the minute is back on digital. But I do go from digital and I get bored of that and I'll go back on oil and, and acrylic. A little DD, huh? Yeah. Well, hey, Bez and Richie, thanks for chatting with us. Uh, we're going to take a look at some of the tattoo of the day from the Tattoo Now website. You guys are welcome to hang with us and uh, take a look at some of these tattoos. Uh, feel free to chime in if you like. Uh, we get these from uh, submissions to tattooednow.com, and you can get the, get the app on the App Store, and people can follow along. Uh, so we try to highlight some of these. So here we are. I'm not exactly sure who we're looking at here. Oh, there oh, we go. So this is Tony Adamson piece. That's pretty damn cool. Yeah, that's a nice piece. Love that blue. Yeah, that blue up against the darker tones really sets it off. Yeah, the contrast's good. But, um, it's nice. Or leg. <laughs> You know, yeah. you know Oleg personally? Yeah, yeah. Oleg's one of my close friends. He's um, technically one of the best tattooists I've ever come across. Um, one of the slowest as well, but he's just amazing. Slow's um, okay. As long as you get a good oh, product at the slow's end. Okay. The results are like what Oleg produces. And that, that there, is, to me, is a, nice, a different take on a koi. It's, um, it's really cool. So this is a, a recent Stefano piece. I think he just did this one in the last week or so. It's awesome. Yeah. 
It's definitely a little bit. Creepy, man. It's cool. He nails it, man. He nails it every single time. Texture, technique, depth, everything you could ever want, and you know it. It, it looks like a Stefano piece. Yeah, it's the level of detail Stefano gets. It's, um, it's unstable, like. Uh, this is a lot of stuff going on here. This, this is our Nesto Nave. We got some galaxies and I think that Ernesto kills it, man. He does a lot of sick paintings too. I'm a big fan of Ernesto. He he rocks it. I think he's up he's up in your way, isn't he? Yeah, he's uh he's New England guy. I think he's out of Connecticut. Oh man, he's so super talented with his pieces and, and his paintings. Very I post bright. a lot of his stuff. I like the I like the reds in there. The red the red and the green contrast is really nice. I like that. Yeah, the contrast with the red and the green and the the red and the oranges is very nice. So Canyon's actually he's out in the northwest. He's from the, one of the shops out there, one of the ones we're tied to actually. That's, it's original. Can you zoom in to a bit of it? Yeah, we we'll get a little zoom in on that. Just bear with us just a second. Oh, there it is. <laughs> no, there you go, Richie. Definitely close enough. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Cool. Is that dot work up there? Yeah. So that's what I'm figure out. Yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's dot work. That's crazy. It's like being on an island living off coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> like dotting tattoos. Y'all just not coconuts. <laughs> wow, that's insane. <laughs> it's very therapy. It's got to be therapeutic doing all those dots. It's, it's. I'm into dot work at the minute, and it is the, one of the most therapeutic things I've ever done. It's awesome. That's nice. I quite like the placement of that. Kind of whispering in his ear like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it starts out. That's right. The first month, it's a whisper. Twenty years later, <laughs> <laughs> a deafening shout. <laughs> She's screaming. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. This is yeah, the same artist. Really nice. Total Tim McAvoy's. Two totally, totally different yeah, styles. Completely different style. Tim's awesome. Yeah, very cool. I like this. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. I like the horns. The text. So yeah. many different styles in there. The yeah, it's got a very Tom Strong sort of, I don't know, graphic look to it. It looks awesome. That, like, I really like that one. The candles are superb. Yeah, those, the flash, the candle flash, circular thingies. It's got like an old school tarot card kind of vibe going on there. Oh, oh isn't that adorable? Ah, oh. yeah, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. That's awesome. Very happy dog. Yeah, with bunny ears. Ty. Wow. Yeah. Ty's been cranking Ty. out some really cool looking tattoos yeah. recently. He's just pushing it at the minute. He's getting better and better. They're, they're lovely. It's texture and his depth is awesome. Wow, so look how it goes into that next piece. It almost looks like that piece is like swelling into it. That's ridiculous. Very lovely girl. Hey, it's another Stefano piece. <laughs> it's uh, a little phallic. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't, but it is now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I guess you're right. <laughs> That's cool. I'll, can we get a little zoom in on that? Nope. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we can. Nope. <laughs> It'll happen. I, I promise. Yeah, cool. I like all the bricks. Yeah, he's not scared to pump it in there. So my mind would have melted the bricks. <laughs> Man, that's cool. Yeah, nice splash coming from behind. That is bad ass. That's a big old piece. Sure is. Well, hey guys, thanks for being with us and going through this stuff with us. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Love me. Bez, watch your back. You got a stormtrooper there. <laughs> Loaded blast is pointed at your back. Yep. Got the whole stormtrooper cast behind me, I think. You got C3PO <laughs> back there, too? Yeah, he is. He's there. 
Oh, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, thanks for being with us, guys. I hope that you uh, stop back sometime. Uh, it was great chatting with you. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, Bez. Take it easy, brother. Later, yeah, guys. Richie. Richie, I'll see you at the Paradise Artist Retreat. Yes, yes. I think, uh, actually, I think, awesome. I think we're rooming together, man. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't room with anybody with the beard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll see you out there, man. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Hustle Butter Deluxe. So that was Richie and Bez. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, this has been a great show so far. Um, Big Gus, we'll have to get him on another time. Uh, he's a busy man. He, uh, he's filming his show, Tattoo Nightmares, trying to squeeze in as much time at home as he can. So uh, he couldn't join us, with us, join us this time. Uh, we do this show for you guys. So if there's anything you want to see out, out on, I mean, on this show, you can get in touch with us, uh, Tattoo Now at TattooNow.com. You can ask us any questions, uh, suggest guests. Uh, we'll be happy to hear all of your input. And if you want to be a part of the show, we're, uh, we're going to be kicking off a Kickstarter campaign in the next week or so to try to get some more equipment, um, bring the show to you in as high quality as possible. Uh, we'll have, you know, donation levels, I mean, you can from very low to up high. Uh, we're always looking for advertisers as well, so if you've got a product that you want to push on the show and you think we're a good fit, we'd be happy to hear from you. Um, the show's a lot of fun, and we do it for you folks out there. And uh, we wouldn't be doing it if you weren't watching. Um, we're glad to have you out there. And like I said, if, if you want to be a part, uh, the Kickstarter is a great way to do that. We're going to take a little break. Uh, we won't have a show on for a few weeks. We're going to go out to the uh, artist retreat, and we're going to try to get as much video as possible and come back and have a really great highlight video of everything that's going on there for the folks who can't join us. Um, you can join us in person if you want to. Uh, the tickets are still out there if you go to uh, paradiseartistretreat.com. Uh, for folks who want to see more of our content, if you've seen some of our webinars before, if you go to tattoonow.com, there's a professional development section there. Uh, all of our webinars are there. Big Gus is doing one in July. He'll definitely be there. Uh, you can buy a ticket and uh, learn a little bit from Big Gus. We offer a season ticket where you can watch all, all of our available webinars for a, a low cost. Uh, you can share it with the folks in your shop. Uh, it's a great deal if you, uh, if you buy it in bulk like that. So uh, thanks for joining us. It's been a good time. A uh, little shout out to uh, Tyler Jones out at our shop out west. Uh, welcome to the crew. Come back next time. It was fun. Tattoos, black and gray realism. I like to uh, do some black and gray macabre skulls by organics portraits. I like to get a depth of field. I like to uh, solid black, you know, short amounts of a mid tone right into skin tones itself, and uh, just keep everything separated, really contrasted. I just I drew since a kid. I just started uh, just drawing, doodling, started drawing skateboard stuff, influenced by skateboard art. And, uh, saw this cat. And, He's heavily tattooed, my dad's friend, and it was on from then. It's the dynamicness of the tattoo. I like to, I like to pull it apart, you know? I like When I'm done, I want to I wanna be able to feel as if it's real, as if I can see through depths, through layers. So 
that's where I'm really getting happy at is it's getting done with something and seeing the, just simply the dynamicness of contrast and just depth. Now I want to start doing full full bodies. You know, I've been really focusing on portraits for a long time and you know getting larger and larger, but now I want to focus on just a larger scale, less clients, um, more time with those same clients. You know, they treat me good, I want to treat them better. Work on machines, I love metal. If I'm not tattooing, I'm grinding and pounding on metal. I, I try to paint, but I have no time for it. I just, cars, bikes, metal, tattoo, that's about it. Paradise, man, this place is awesome. There's uh, there's no dick swinging going on here, you know? Everybody's walking around, everybody's humble, everybody's sharing. There's uh, really no time for ego here. Everybody's just simply sharing, man. It's good, it's good for everybody.